Hello, in this lecture we'll be discussing accounting objective and principles. We will be able to list accounting objectives, explain why they are relevant, list accounting principles, and explain why they are relevant. So accounting objectives. We have an accounting objective to provide useful information to investors, creditors, and others. So the main principle is that for financial statement accountings, for financial accounting, our objective will generally be to create financial statements for external users, those users being outside of the company for the most part and that would generally be investors and creditors for the most part that doesn't mean that these financial statements will not be used for internal use it just means that the primary objective in terms of the formation of the financial statements are for external use there are they are for external users to be depending on them oftentimes for publicly traded companies this is the case because they're being traded on a public stock exchange Provide information that is relevant, reliable, and comparable. So our objective for the financial statements is to provide these external users with relevant information, information that is reliable, and what are they going to do with that information? They're going to be comparing things. They're going to be comparing one year to the next year. They're going to be comparing the one company to another company. We, as our objective in terms of standardizing these financial statements, are looking to standardize them so that these types of comparisons can be made. We want to be able to compare one period to another. We want to be able to compare one company to another. We want to be able to compare apples to apples in those situations. Accounting principles and assumptions. So first off, I'm just going to list the assumptions. And these are the assumptions that will be relevant to us that we're going to keep in mind. And these are assumptions that are there unless they are stated otherwise. So when we create the financial statements, these principles and assumptions are both guiding us in creating them and assumed unless stated otherwise. So we have the measurement principles, we have the revenue recognition principle, we have the matching principle, we have the full disclosure principle, we have the going concern assumption, we have the monetary unit assumption, and business entity assumption. So going into more detail on these, we have the measurement principle, which is accounting information is based on cost. This seems to be obvious when you look at it at first glance, but when you look at some certain transactions, it can be less obvious. For example, if we were to buy a building, how, or if we were going to have the building on our, on our uh, financial statements, how do we measure the building? Well, we could have an appraisal price. We could have how much are we paying for the building as opposed to how much the listed price would be for the building. And the question is, which of these would we use in order to report uh, the asset and usually the the answer is going to be we're going to record it at cost now why would that be why would cost be the way that we would want to report that what's the justification of that when we if we're in a free market situation where we have two individuals that make a free decision on a free market the assumption is that both individuals are paying what they think the thing is worth the building in this case and therefore we assume that that is the market value, that the market is setting the price when we buy it. So if it's between, if it's a decision between two in individuals who are free to make their own decisions and have all the relevant information they need to make that decision, then it's assumed that at the date of the purchase, that is the market price, the market is setting the price. Are there exceptions to these principles? There could be, you can think of some exceptions that we could deal with at a later time, which could be something like, what if they're related parties involved in the sale and whatnot that we can discuss. But for the most part, that's the principle behind recording something at cost. The other thing that could be confusing to individuals is what if we bought, say, a car and we financed part of it? So the, the cost of it is 50000 but we financed 40000 of it. Do, you know, what do we report the cost of the car? And once we generally report it at what we paid, which is the full sticker price in that case generally, it's just that we also took out a loan in order to pay that. So we're going to have to, we're going to record it at the full cost, 50000 but we're also going to record the loan, the liability that we incurred in order to pay that cost. So we have the revenue recognition principle. Revenue is recognized when it is earned. So I often ask students to ask them, what are we in business to do? And a lot of times I get the answer that we're in business to get money, make money. And I want to make a distinction between making money and earning revenue. There is a difference between the two. We generally are in business to earn revenue. 
and we usually get paid in the form of money. Money is our, our most preferential payment for the most part, but we could get paid in something else. If we bartered for something, it would be just as much, we would still have earned revenue if we got paid in something other than cash. And so our goal is to, is to generate revenue. We hope to get paid usually in cash for what we've earned. And when those two things happen could be different points in time. Most businesses oftentimes earn the revenue before they get the cash. Meaning if it's a service business, for example, you would earn the revenue. We would probably send out an invoice. Then we would get the cash sometime in a later date. Therefore, we would recognize the revenue when we earned it, not necessarily when we got the cash at a later date under the revenue recognition principle. It is possible for the reverse to happen. It is possible for us to say we're going to do work for you in the future, but we want a down payment now. And therefore, we would get cash before we did the work. Once again, we and under the revenue recognition principle, we could not recognize that cash even though we got it because we didn't earn it yet. We're going to earn it sometime in the future. We have the matching principle, which is going to be the basically the expense half of the revenue recognition principle. Expenses recorded when an asset is consumed or liability incurred in the same time period as the revenue it helped to generate. Now we could think about the expense type principle of the revenue recognition principle, the expense type of accrual principle as similar to the revenue recognition, something that we consumed in the time period we consumed it rather than the time period we paid for it. Uh, this matching principle, one nice thing about expressing it in terms of a matching principle is that the goal of the business is, of course, to generate revenue. And therefore, the goal of the expenses is what we expended in order to achieve the goal of generating revenue. So what we're trying to do is match the time period in which we had to spend or consume something in order to generate revenue. So usually most expenses, you got utilities expenses, wages expenses. A lot of times what happens is we paid for something with an asset cash. We consumed a service in those cases and therefore we generated the expense in the time period that we used the wages, that we consumed the utilities. So that would be the matching principle. On the other hand, it is possible for us to pay for something on account. So we consume something and we pay for it on account, meaning we're going to pay for it sometime in the future. Once again, we're still going to recognize the expense when we incurred basically that liability or consumed the service. Full disclosure principle. Details that would impact users' decisions should be reported. So remember that our goal is to have relevant information to external users. Now, if there's something that is not reported on the financial statements that could have a relevant impact on the decision making of external users, then we should disclose that information possibly in the footnotes of the financial statements. So for example, if there was a lawsuit that was potentially going to affect us and have a relevant decision or a relevant amount that would impact us, then maybe that should be something that, that should be disclosed. If we were going to shut down a certain department or something, if there's going to be a big merger or something like that, that uh, is very likely to happen that would have impact on decision makers, those are something that we may want to disclose. Going concern assumption assumes that the company will not be closed, but will continue to operate. So our assumption for business in general is that the business is in there for a long term time period. So unless it is stated otherwise, the assumption is that the company is there to remain in business. It's not there to uh, close soon. If it is in financial difficulty or has is going to close at some point relatively soon, if that is the plan, then that should generally be something that should be disclosed. Otherwise, the assumption would be that it, it is a going concern, meaning that it's going to uh, last for this the near future. There's no plans on closing it. And there's a that's one of the differences between really a legitimate business and kind of a scam. If, if a company was, was to come into uh, existence and the idea was short-term gains and then closing, uh, a lot of times that is not a legitimate business objective. Most businesses get into the business thinking that they're going to be there for a, a long-term time period and that's the assumption that we generally wait, make for business and if that is the case then uh, businesses are in business to generate more more uh, trust in the in the community because they know that they want to be in there for the long haul. That's the assumption that we want to make. Monetary unit assumptions. Transactions can be expressed in terms of money. 
Once again, this seems like obvious, but when we break it down, there's some ideas that is worth thinking about in this type of assumption. It's clearly, when we report the when we report the financial statements, we report them in terms of dollars, in terms of money and units. But uh, when we think about you know what is on there, if we're saying what is on there, we have one building. We don't report the financial statements as if we have one unit of buildingness. We have one building, but that's not how we report it on the financial. We report it on the financial saying we have so many dollars worth of building. And so the assumption is that we can do that, that it makes sense for us to be able to measure things in terms of dollars. And of course, that's one of the major functions of the unit of a dollar is we're trying to make it so that we can measure things so that we can then more easily compare things. If there's periods of high inflation or something like that that distorts the measurement of the dollar, that distorts our ability to do things like that in order to measure things. So we'll, we'll run into issues on that. Well, what if the building was bought a long time ago and now we're, we still have it uh, and you know the, the price of the building could have changed? How do we measure it? Again, the, the assumption is that we could do it somehow in terms of dollars and that would be the the same for all areas of the financial statements can report it's going to be reported in terms of dollars so business entity assumption assume uh, business is accounted for separate from the owners so the idea being even if we're a sole proprietor even if we're a small business that the business assets are going to be separate from the personal assets and we're going to separate those objectives out the business objective being to generate revenue the personal objective being to be whatever that is. If we can do that, then we, we can assume and track the progress of the business a lot more easily. And that's what defines the difference between an asset and an expense that's going to be both a personal and a business asset. So if we have something that's helping us achieve a goal in the future, that's going to be some type of asset. What type of asset is it going to be? Is it going to be a personal asset or a business asset? Well, it depends on our objective mainly. If we if we have a building that we're using in order to help us generate revenue and it's a factory or something like that, then clearly it's a business objective. It's a business asset. If it's a home that we live in and we don't do any work in it, then it's generally a personal asset. If we have an expense that we consumed in order to help us generate revenue in the same time period, say it's the utility bill on the factory, then that's going to be an expense of the business. If it's a utility bill on the house, then of course the objective of it was to live well or something like that. That would be a personal utility in that case. So we are now able to list accounting objectives, explain why they are relevant, list accounting principles, and explain why they are relevant.